The devil. The devil. Peace and blessings, sis. Peace and blessings. God bless. Where's my wife? Did she get back on? Princess NG. Peace and blessings. I'm going to talk to you guys. Well, let me see if anybody else want to get on. I know I just popped up with a spontaneous scope, but I want to talk to you guys about whose report do you believe? Whose report do you believe? Hey wife, there you go. That's what I was waiting on. When I mean report, I mean like the news, you know. When you work with the news, you know, a person that worked with the news, what do they call them? A news reporter. So they report current events. They report different information, happenings, what's going on. You know, if there's any changes, what's happening in laws, politics, business. So when we say, who be whose report do you believe? Whose news do you believe? When Jesus came into the earth, the Bible says that angels appeared to shepherds and they made an announcement. They came with glad tidings and announced to the shepherds that Jesus, the solution, had come into the earth. We preach the gospel, which is the good news, but we're not the only one giving a report. We're not the only ones commentating about current events. We're not the only ones giving our opinions or updates or news reports about what's going on in the world today. But whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm about to believe this McDonald's report. I'm hungry with a O. <laughs> so, a couple of disclaimers. You know, yesterday I was, I realized I was having a hard time remembering certain things. Like, I was just having a hard time remembering things. Okay? I don't know why I was just having, I couldn't remember and lost my ID. Give me one second. A Sprite. And they go. That's it. You saw a 659. You can close the first one, So, I'm just going to talk about a couple of things. So, yesterday, how you doing? hungry y'all it's my break so yesterday right I was asking God how can I sharpen my memory how can I sharpen my memory like you know I used to be able to let's go yeah can I get a um So I was asked, I'm like, I remember I used to remember everything, like, I used to remember every revelation, everything that happened, what you said, what you was thinking, just everything, like, and now it's like, I be real absent-minded, like, I be having, like, just blank moments. So I'm like, God, what is going on? Am I getting old? You know, you said that your spirit would bring it into remembrance. 
So I asked God, you know, how can, you know, I sharpen my memory, like, and what the Lord gave me was, he said, read. He said, read, you know, read. So it's funny because the Lord gave me that revelation probably 20, 30 minutes later, you know, my mom, she sends me a text of a picture of the difference between successful and unsuccessful people. And the first thing that the first habit of a successful person is that they read daily. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, amen. That was the confirmation. Then I get on Facebook and my boy, one of my Facebook friends was like, you know what, man? I need to read more. Somebody recommend a book for me to read. <laughs> And I scrolled down some more and another one of my Facebook friends said the same thing. He like, man, you know, I've had a conviction that I need to read more. Like, so God gave that to me and it seems that he's given that to other people. And um, I believe that reading is fundamental. <laughs> but now seriously, like, you know, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you just read anything, but I'm not suggesting that you read only the Bible. I'm just saying I'm encouraging you and admonishing you to read more because learning sharpens you. It gives you. Can you give me like a um a sauce? I'm in it. What kind of sauce? Um, what kind? Of, like a sweet and sour. Give me two sweet and sours, please, bro. Thank you. So I don't know if it may be the service. Forgive me, y'all. Thank you, my brother. Have a good one. So. You know, God was just telling me how reading sharpens your brain power, like. It sharpens your brain function, just reading, like. You be able to sharpen your mind, like. You know? Just learning, like. You know? And I can't remember. I mean, the last time I probably read is the book Shamar gave me a long time ago, like. Besides reading the Bible here and there. But it's been a while since I actually read through a book. And I say that to my own shame. So that was the advice. That, and it's funny. I'm saying that because probably a week ago. I was talking with the wife about this. And I was like, you know what? We should read as a family. Like we should just have like a half hour of our day. And we just all sit down and read like. You know? So it's a blessing how God had already gave me the solution. I didn't even realize. Amen. So I, I, I believe that, you know, it will behoove us and I admonish each and every person to read a little bit more like. You know? I'm believing to come to a place where, just getting started off, I want to read at least one book a month. I want to read one book a month, like, you know? I want to get back into reading more, like, because my mind was a lot sharper and everything when I was reading. It's just the truth. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. The second thing before I get into my little quick lesson is I want I want you guys to be praying because I don't know if you guys remember as you can go back to it um on the lesson I did called oils and I talked about how God told me the locusts are coming and I and I read in the scripture I read in that scripture in Revelation about the locusts, how the Bible says that the people will want to die, but they wouldn't die, like, you know? And they talk about the locusts being like, they had armor and weapons and all of that. So I don't know, I didn't know exactly how it's going to manifest, but obviously it's some type of warfare. But it says that they're going to hurt people so bad that people are going to want to die, but they can't die. And as I, I listened to that message again yesterday, the Holy Spirit 
put these words in my mind. Biological warfare. Biological warfare. So biological warfare is basically when they use a weapon that makes people sick and stuff like that. For instance, you remember, you know, as a weapon against America, you know, the, the quote unquote terrorist was putting anthrax in the, in the mail. So you open up your mail and it's anthrax in there and you get sick and some people died and everything. So that's an example of biological warfare. Now I'm not, I don't know if that necessarily means that the government is going to do it. It doesn't matter if the government is going to do it or if Satan himself is going to do it. Like what I, what I believe is that it's going to be some type of plague or strong sickness that's going to come. But it's really a biological warfare. I just believe that. That's just what the Lord gave. He told me biological warfare. So I just believe it. You know? I just believe it. So I'm sharing that because just be praying, you know? Add that to your prayer list and just be praying, you know, that God will keep us safe. Keep the people of God safe. You know, and that all things will work together for the good. Amen. Now... What I want to talk to you, who believes the report? So in Mark chapter 5, you know, Mark chapter 5 is a powerful chapter. There was a man named Jairus, Jairus, in Mark chapter 5. And Jairus had a daughter that was sick. And he entreated Jesus that Jesus would come to his house and pray and lay hands on his daughter. And he knew that she would recover. So he heard the testimonies of Jesus and his abilities. He's in a vulnerable place where he need a miracle. And he besought the Lord. He asked the Lord. He beseeched the Lord to come work a miracle for his daughter that was only sick. So Jairus and Jesus. Jesus said, amen. Jesus said, okay, I'll do it. So Jesus followed, you know, that's a revelation. Jesus said, okay, I'll do it. So somebody, you know, you're trying to believe God for something and you're unsure. But I feel like for somebody, Jesus is saying, okay, I'm going to do it. So Jesus and Jairus, they started walking to Jairus' home. While they're walking, the woman with the issue of blood touches Jesus while they're on the way. While they're on the way for Jesus to do a miracle in Jairus' family. He stopped and did a miracle for someone else. Someone else's faith halted Jesus in the process of doing a miracle for Jairus. And Jesus did a miracle for this lady. Then, after he did the miracle for this lady, it, the Bible says that rulers of the synagogues, which was the religious leaders, a ruler of the synagogue came to Jesus and Jairus and said, Listen, Jesus. It's no point of you keep teaching this stuff and there's no point of you um, going to Jairus' house because his daughter is dead. And the Bible says that Jesus immediately, the Bible says that the, Jesus did not receive his words but spoke against them. I had a Bible in my car and I don't, I don't know, I was probably in the back. And this Mark chapter 5, you could check me out. The Bible says that Jesus did not consider his words. And then Jesus spoke words against his words. Jesus said, fear not, believe only. Believe only. Whose report will you believe? I feel like that message, you know, me and my brother was talking about this this morning. I feel like this message is prophetic in that. You know, most of us are like Jairus, you know. We asked the Lord, we besought the Lord, we prayed, we sought Jesus. And we believe that we got a confirmation that Jesus would be true to his word, that Jesus would work a miracle on our behalf, that Jesus would change our sick situation, our corrupted situation, our perverted situation, our unhealthy situations. Just like Jairus had a daughter that was sick. Many of us have relationships and situations and connections and tribulations and we had, we're 
You know, many of our hope is deferred and our heart is sick because of disappointment. We all like Jairus, we got situations that we need Jesus to come and heal. Jesus to come and restore. Jesus to come and do a miracle. I know I do. You know, I know I do. Now, while Jesus was in route of doing the miracle, mm -hmm. there was a delay because he stopped to do a miracle for somebody else. Now, we the Jairus and we're walking with Jesus. We're in route of seeing our miracle happen. We're in route of getting our breakthrough. Jesus is the word of God. So we walking with the word. We're walking with the promise. We're walking with the prophetic revelations that have been spoken. We're walking with these things, but sometimes there's a delay. And we don't understand why there's a delay. But sometimes there's a delay because somebody else is pulling on Jesus too. And Jesus stops to, do, to minister to somebody else. There may be a delay because it might be somebody else in a worse situation of than you. There may be a delay because it's somebody else believing for a miracle that might need a miracle right at this moment. But it doesn't mean that Jesus has forgot about you. It doesn't mean that Jesus is not still in route. It doesn't mean that the word is not in route just because you haven't seen it get there yet. You haven't seen it arrive. It doesn't mean that the prophecy is not, is, isn't working. It's still working. It's still in route. Even if it's delayed, it's still in route. Hold on to the word. Keep walking with the word. Now, the next thing happened was while they were en route, somebody came with news. Somebody came with a report different than what Jesus said in the beginning. They said, listen, it's no point to keep talking. It's no point, Jesus, you keep trying to minister this foolishness. It's no point to keep walking with Jesus because the situation has progressed into a death life. The situation is progressed into the impossible. But how many know God specializes in the impossible? How many facing a situation that a month ago you was believing God to fix, but it only seemed in your journey of getting your breakthrough, things only got worse? But whose report will you believe? Jesus spoke up for the man and said, believe only. The person that brought the report was a religious person. Isn't it amazing how religious people or people that's supposed to be acquainted with God or the word of God can come against the report of the Lord? You're like, man, I'm believing God. They're like, yeah, I know you believe God, but maybe you should think about doing this. Maybe you should consider this. Isn't it amazing how religious people be the main people that try to pull you out of faith? that try to pull you out of walking with your promise, walking with the prophecy. Isn't it amazing because they don't have the same faith as you? So whose report are we going to believe? Just because things are progressing and looking like they're getting worse, we still believe the report of the Lord. We still believe in the promises of God. We still believe that the one that we entrusted with our faith He's able to bring it to pass. He's able to see it through all the way to the end of our faith. He that begun a good work, he'll also finish it. He that is the author of our faith is also the finisher. So we don't, we would, we, let's not allow someone else's report, you know, get us to not believe that Jesus is able to finish what he started. Amen. Now, sometimes we get so devastated with, with, with the report of the world, the report of the enemy. We so boggled down by news and updates and how things are shifting and how things is getting worse that sometimes we can't even speak faith for ourselves. Sometimes we don't even know what to say. You know, these people brought an evil report, a destructive report against Jairus' faith. He was walking with Jesus. He was walking with the word. He was walking in faith. Even though there were some delays, even though things progressively got worse, worse, he was still standing with Jesus and a religious person brought an evil, destructive report to destroy his faith. And he didn't even know what to say. And sometimes that's like us. We don't even know the right things to say. We don't even know the right things to pray. We don't even know how to pro pro uh, profess faith. We like, God, I don't even know what's going on. 
But I'm so grateful that just like Jairus in that time when Jairus didn't even know what to say, Jesus spoke up for him. You know, Jesus said, if you confess me, I'll confess you before my father. Isn't it a blessing to know that even when you don't have the words, the right words to pray, the right words to decree and declare, the right words of faith. Isn't it good to know that when you don't know what to say, Jesus will speak up for you. And the thing that he's saying is, don't be afraid. Don't be overwhelmed. Just believe. I'm the author and finisher of your faith. If I've begun a good work, I'm able to see it all the way through to the end. Just believe. Just believe. Whose report will you believe? Romans chapter 10. All right, family, peace and blessing. Pray that this scope encouraged you, strengthened you, uh, empowered your resolve to keep going, to stand, to endure. After we've done all we can, we just stand. Believe in God. Amen. Peace and blessings.